we had several topics today. Uh, one is uh, carry over it from previous meeting, which is uh, writing tests for application. And I cannot see uh, Isaac in the list. So I guess we have to skip it. Right. And I myself, I proposed two topics. One was to just go through 1.8 milestone and basically just look for issues which we want to have in 1.8, but they're in a bad shape and you know we can discuss what we can do about them. And two follow-up topics kind of, so we spoke about improving release process of uh, uh, GitOps engine and UI library. And for both, we had a short discussion in GitHub and I, I just wanted to kind of finalize the final decision. Okay, so, and if you don't mind, I want to start from 1.8 milestone. So, and uh, feel free to stop me at any time, but my goal was to just go through all these issues and I'm going to basically say what I know about each issue and if you have anything to add, just let me know, please. Uh, yeah, and I will try to give a short summary about each issue. Uh, all right, so, so this is 1.8 milestone and we have 17 remaining uh, items open. So first one is uh, repo server performance. And basically I think it's in a good shape. The pull request to close the last improvement uh, is open and it's in review. Plus we know how to test it. So we have one uh, Argo CD user and they really kind of suffer from performance issues. Uh, it's a new relic so they have to run more than 100 instances, instances of repo server. So basically we have, I'm hoping to uh, convince them to do some early testing of pre-release. And so we can confidently say if the changes which we've made are enough for them or not enough. All right, so I think this one is in a good shape. And um, then next one is a log out redirect. So it's not really like a blocking blocking issue for, for 1.8, but it's related to security. And that's why I think it was kind of prioritized in 1.8 release. And I know Jandeep is working on it. And I feel like we kind of clear on what to do. And we, are, we basically, we identified two cases. Uh, so the original issue was requested for external OIDC provider. And we know how to, deal with it. Basically, we know how to work with external OIDC provider. We also run DEX. And then uh, when Jandeep, he was investigating, basically he realized that there is DEX as well. So we do not really know how to delete uh, tokens in DEX during logout process, but it is also not very critical. So I feel like it's still in a good shape. If we cover OIDC and we know how to do it, we could, yeah. and we can just create a second ticket for future to work with DEX. That makes sense, right? Okay, so seems like this is good as well. So the next one, uh, this is, it, it was kind of inserted into 1.8 release. We didn't plan <clears throat> to work on it, but this is basically uh, JC discovered uh, a missing feature in Argo CD to support rollouts. And because we are very friendly with rollouts and we want to you know, deliver the feature as soon as possible, uh, the ticket was created. And the idea that um, in Argo CD we have actions and it is beneficial to use uh, status subresource to change status instead of just regular Kubernetes patch. And Jesse is taking care of it. The pull request is already open. so. I think it's in a good shape. Um, okay, so next two tickets are pretty much not really blocking release, but I think we want to get them done to test release well. And I know that both are in progress right now. Um, so I'm just going to keep both of them. So basically, we, I think we know what we're doing. First already has PR, actually two PRs, and second, I think, uh, to be started. Um, okay, uh, the next ticket, uh, I don't think it's blocking, 
but we added it because it was kind of such a bad uh, gap in the documentation. Yeah, and I think it was started, at least it was assigned, but I have not heard about progress. So, um, not sure if Rishita is in the call. Oh, no, she isn't. Oh. Oh, okay, yeah. And then I think it's basically, it's totally fine to move it to the next, you know, 208 release. Uh, and then maybe we can follow up offline. So I'm just going to put it aside and then uh, send a message, or maybe just to ask for update. Okay, so I think it's still still good. So nothing. Yeah, I, I think I can follow up with her and ask her uh, about the issue. Mm -hmm. Um, and then get back to you on the issue. Maybe. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, the next is, uh, so that was a feature request. It's not critical. I think we can release 1.8 without it, but I guess we just want uh, the feature as soon as possible, just because of, uh, it's like every, we, it happens more and more frequently. We want to make some changes in our CD and we want to update uh, our users. Uh, so it's not critical, but important feature. And I know that Gagan is working on it. The PR was created. It was one round of review. And I feel like we just have to keep working on it. And if it's ready by 1.8, fine, we'll include it. If not, then we just move it to 1.9. Yeah. Alex, when is the 1.8 release uh, due? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, when's, the, when's the last date we can work on the 1.8 uh, release? I think we don't have like a hard, hard deadline. Okay. And we just kind of, we are approaching the typical, uh, you know, two months uh, for, the, for the release. Uh, so I feel like I expect us to spend maybe another week to close all the tickets just based on previous you know, experience. And uh, maybe another week or two to test and fix all the bugs. Okay. Yeah. And, and maybe basically I, I was hoping to go through that this with everyone and maybe you can correct my expectations because I might be missing something. And that's the kind of whole goal. Collect the information and share. All right. Um, okay. So the next ticket, it's kind of, it's uh, usually we just upgrade Helm every release just to be, you know, up to, just to have up to date uh, Helm versions. And hopefully this will take like 10 minutes of someone's time. So we can do it at the very last moment. I don't expect anything, uh, you know, uh, no surprises here. Um, yeah, but someone just have to pick it up and do it. Uh, regarding the, the home version two, mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe it might sense to to drop it all together in the near future, right? Um, because yeah. I think they they also they they say it's out of life very soon. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, it's. Um, I, I'm kind of I don't mind doing that. I'm just scared that we might get a lot of frustrated user who not ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah so sure. It's kind of. I feel like to do that, some investigation needed. So it feels easier to me to upgrade and then work on it in 1.9, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, no, uh, let's let's fix that issue, mm -hmm. update Helm v2, but I think we should put the Helm v2 deprecation on, on our roadmap as well, so. Okay, so for 1.9, I mean, in 1.9 here. Yeah, I think yeah something like that, right. Okay, agreed. So, sounds good. Um, okay, I think, and this is basically, this is a list of all the remaining enhancements. So going forward, they're just bugs. Um, okay, so this is one bug, and I think maybe this is one of the few who never worked on yet. So the uh, good thing about that bug is that it's not a regression, it's like a day zero bug, and we know how to fix it. So it was kind of you know uh, easy win to Im in, uh, improve user experience, and just to give some some background. So uh, right now, if user click on the source in the UI, 
uh, we should show a resource and a version that is in Git, but we show just latest preferred version of that resource. So yeah, and there was some, uh, basically, I feel like we can move it on in 1.9, uh, but you know, if, if we get it done, then great. Yeah. So even though it doesn't have a signy, I'm not really worried about this bug yet. All right, uh, so the next ticket is, uh, this is again, uh, it was discovered during uh, rollout integration. So it's a pretty much day zero bug. Uh, and the problem is that Argo CD sync waves might falsely move to the next wave. Basically might move to the next wave too early uh, because of racing condition in kind of in Kubernetes. So it was like a thing we discovered recently and I know that JC, I think he already sent, he, oh no, he, he has not sent PR yet, but we expect pull request in like today, basically. Um, yeah, so I think this one is in, in a good shape, we'll have a fix. Um, next one is a critical 1.8 bug and pull request is open already. So this is good. It's basically, this is a, it's a change that prevents Argo CD from accidentally delete resources. Uh, due to uh, some issues. Yes, and the next bug, they are pretty much the same. So this is like, this is how that problem manifest. And that was more of, so basically the second one is a duplicate of the first one. So I think these two, two bugs are in a, in a good shape as well. Uh, the next one is, so we had regression in 1.7 we implemented a change and then that change was not enough. We reverted change. And this is pretty much continuation of the 1.7 change. And we already sent pull request to support it. So this one is good as well. Um, okay, uh, the next ticket is, uh, I, we didn't plan it for 1.8, but that was a community contribution and we just need to get it done. So I feel like I'm going to work on the ticket uh, by the, I mean, it should be done by end of this week. Uh, okay, and so far, it seems to me that nothing is like really worrying, um, nothing in, in a bad shape. And the, we have these three issues, and uh, I mean, I don't really know a good answer for these three. So, uh, for two, basically. This is, uh, it's a, this one, we, I think we should just get it done. It's a, just a documentation improvement, and it's not critical. Um, yeah, I guess we added it to 1.8 because it's really, really easy to get it done. And there are two bugs uh, which no one is working on yet. Uh, one is um, there is a known issue of uh, API applications, so it's extremely slow. If your Argo CD has a lot of applications and you have a lot of RBAC rules. So this combination makes, you know, that API can, can take like 10 seconds to return the data. And there was, a, a, it feels like something like a day zero bug, which still exists. And we tried to work on it in 1.7 and it didn't really, it was not really fixed. So it was carried over to 1.8. So yeah, basically two issues, which I, first one, I don't know how to fix. I think we'll need to kind of think about it. And second one, we don't know how to reproduce. And yeah, and I guess this is kind of just for information. It's, I feel like we, it seems to me that we should not block whole release for just for these two issues. I would rather, you know, get everything else done and then deliver these two fixes in patch release. Um, yeah. and then. Like what? Are you, what? Are you, what do you think is? Uh, yeah. Does it make sense to you? Like, what do you think? To to take these issues over. Uh, and yes. To the next release. Case, just just move them to the next release. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably, I think so. Uh, the the one eight milestone already it looks awesome, right? Yeah. I, I mean, there's so many so many issues fixed and quite a couple of new features and, and some bugs that really had a huge impact. Mm -hmm. So 
I'm I'm all for releasing the 1.8 mm -hmm. as soon as possible. So in this case, I, I'm unsure. I, I didn't have a I didn't have a detailed look at at those uh, two issues on the bottom yet. I can uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I was trying. I I think I tried to give a summary, but this is basically it's a performance issue, and that mm -hmm. worries me is because the whole kind of uh, you know the goal of that release was to increase performance and i think we did a lot of performance improvements except this one and this is like a last thing which we could not do well and yeah but at the same time it doesn't affect all the users it's like only a few i mean not few only some users who decided to manage our bug in a declarative way in git so they introduced a lot of groups in uh, our bug configuration and they have a lot of users with m multiple groups. Yeah, so that's why that API is really slow. So, yeah, maybe they're candidates for 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 the next patch release mm -hmm. of one eight branch. I I don't I I take a look myself, but I think it's okay. So all right, at least I think now we all know that. So we have a lot of tickets in progress, but if my feeling is that everyone understands how to, you know, work on the on the ticket, and we hopefully will get it done like literally in a week. So, yeah, and I, I would say milestone one to date is in a good shape. And it's a very sexy milestone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and uh, I wanted to really discuss with you like how are we going to test it because I think this is a very first one that so RBCD release. Uh, which has so many people ready to you know help and contribute, and I can tell what we did before. So we literally we used to go through all the changes manually, just parse Git log, and we would create a shared document, just a Google spreadsheet, with all the kind of features which we have to test, and then. Uh, Argo CD team members go through each and every change and manually verify it. Uh, yeah. And then whoever finds some problem works on the fix. And maybe this is enough. Uh, I want to hear if anyone has any better suggestion, like better way to uh, organize it. To, uh, to manually test all right. the issues. Yes, and I feel like I'm, yeah, I, I want to know who wants to volunteer to participate in that process <laughs> to help, help with testing. <laughs> and then uh, if, if there are any, I, I'm happy to you know, work on that spreadsheet and share it with you. I'm going to do it for myself in either, either way. So it would be, typically it's like a 100 lines long spreadsheet, which has a top level feature definition with the link to either PR or GitHub issue and, and short summary. And then, and usually there are names and people can just, you know, put a note or some, some mark to indicate that issue was tested. And this is kind of, this is just to make sure as many, as many possible eyes saw the change and tested it as, yeah. Uh, I guess I'm not asking you to volunteer for it right now, but maybe, you know, if you decide to help with it, let me know in Slack. And or you can, you can put up the, the spreadsheet and yes. um, mm -hmm. people can, can maybe write their name next to the, to the issue mm -hmm. and so state that they will be testing it. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. So basically, I can, just, I can start the spreadsheet and just open pretty much you need access to anyone. And then if you want to help, just add your name in it. And yeah, yeah uh, Alex, I, I have a question. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we are verifying the issues manually, right? So we have the steps, we are somehow recording the steps, like how we verified that. So is there any plan to automate that? Mm -hmm. um, to uh, automate it, I feel like it's more, it's not really um, kind of just a testing, this is to, uh, this is so everyone understands what was changed in the release mm -hmm. and then kind of make sure the change at least makes sense and 
And then also it's good to check if we already have automated test for that change. And if change is missing, it's totally fine, I think, to create ticket and kind of create automated test if it's missing for a change. Yeah. But it's like, even though, even if we find that everything is already automated, we still need to at least, uh, you know, uh, verify all the changes at least once manually and make sure that we didn't introduce any logical problems. For example, there might be two features and each, each feature is perfectly implemented fine, but together those two features might create, might have a bad effect. For example, some use case might be broken. Yeah. So the goal is to verify the whole re you know, release as a whole and make sure we're delivering meaningful set of changes and nothing kind of critical is missing or we didn't miss, miss anything. And maybe it would also make sense if, so if when we look at the issues um, to note whether, whether this issue needs, for example, an entry in the upgrade nodes, right? Yeah, this is, that's also so important. If it's, if it's a slightly backwards incompatible change or something like that, something that the user needs to take action. Um, yeah, maybe this, this should be noted in this sheet as well, because I, I know it's, it's so many issues. It's, it's hard to, to 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 re remember all of them and which mm. one needs, but there were I think there were a couple already. Huh? Yeah, and um, yeah, this release will have some kind of not breaking changes, but some uh, manual steps that people have to do during upgrade. Yeah. And it's not it's again kind of to clarify, it's not typical like we are not going to do just QA because. I think we should assume that every issue, every change which we can merge that was tested and you know, whoever did the change and if you were tested already, uh, the improvement or bug fix, uh, but we need to kind of just do it again. And typically at the end of release, we need to communicate to our users, what are we releasing? And so it will really help us to, uh, you know, come up with meaningful release notes. So in these release notes, we can group uh, all the issues kind of effectively, and we can describe that, okay, there was a set of things which improved uh, performance. I know we did a lot of UI improvements, and unless we tell about these UI improvements in a, kind of in, a, in, a, in a clear way, our end users won't have any kind of source of data. So I know that yeah, Tim, for example, he did a lot of changes in multiple places, I'm pretty sure we can not just give a list of issues, but we can say, oh, uh, application list page was improved significantly because of it has better, better filters and some user-friendly uh, improvements as well. Yeah, that's good. Yep, and that's true, thanks. Okay, awesome. So I'm, I'm going to uh, create this doc. I think there is no rush to do it because we still have at least one week of work this is just my kind of gut feeling, but the next week uh, it should be created and I think we should start testing. Who? Cool. Well, maybe in the spreadsheet, uh, I may want to indicate what cluster that you want to be testing on. Um, oh, you mean the cluster? Um, like GKE or uh, OpenShift or whatever cluster. Oh, I see. You are. Oops, the feedback. You mean uh, add a note if if it requires? Yes. Yeah, so so my, my, maybe uh, uh, helpful to um, the this the sheet the sign up sheet or whatever we call it uh, the, the spreadsheet that maybe you have a uh, person and then maybe you can indicate uh, on what kind of cluster they are they be testing on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I think it's fair. Yeah, we should add a note. If it's requires, if it requires a special cluster, I think we had several changes that are OpenShift specific. Okay, um, right. So if you have any other idea to help with testing, just let me know, please. Offline, I will be happy to you know, do as much as possible. And as I mentioned, we have these uh, several tasks to create automation. It's not blocking release, but I think I will, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy we have already 
PRs going and we'll need to, so the sooner we get them, the better. I think once we have a first uh, smoke test, we can configure it and run it against cd.apps.argoprocess.io so we can uh, hopefully catch some bugs. Okay, um, I want to move on. So there were two other topics. I feel like I just wanted, I felt like we have to make some decision about these topics. So we wanted to improve release process of uh, UI library and team created a proposal. And I feel like no one had any objections. So basically we've got second idea uh, to, so the proposal was to create uh, either stable or release branch in Argo UI library. And then consumers should get, uh, should consume stable version. So code from either stable or release branch. And this would kind of simplify making changes in, uh, in Argo UI. So the goal is to kind of batch uh, this upgrade work. And there was additional proposal later on to also start publishing the changes into NPM. And that, that improvement would help to simplify build. So basically consumer don't have to rebuild uh, the whole library consumer could just consume uh, just, you know, just a JavaScript file and CSS instead of TypeScript and uh, CSS. So I'm, I totally fine. I'm totally fine with that proposal. I think it's clear. And if anyone has any objections, please let us know, or we can just start and implement it. Yeah, so and we have similar proposal for GitOps engine. It was important to ask uh, GitLab and we've got the response from GitLab. So GitLab consumes GitOps engine and we want to start creating release branches and release text for GitOps engine, but we do not want to kind of break and change a lot uh, development process. So Argo CD would keep using master and only after we create release version of Argo CD, then we create um, it, the release version of Argo CD must point to a release tag. So it would be a very minor change for us. And we did ask uh, GitLab and they say, so basically Mikhail is the only developer from uh, GitLab who works a lot on GitOps engine. And at this point he don't really care because he, I think he, he's the most active contributor to GitOps engine. So uh, I got his response as, uh, I don't mind it, even if you do breaking changes because we are kind of still working closely together. So whatever worked for us works for him. Yeah, so if no one has any objection about that change, I'm going to just create a release branch and the tag as soon as we create our release. So like basically it, the ticket will be implemented once we release uh, Argo CD. Sounds fine. Awesome. Cool. That was, that's pretty much it. This is, uh, that's what I had. Uh, this is what I, I wanted to discuss in that meeting. And now we have 30 minutes uh, to do anything. Anyone have any uh, questions in, or in, any? Yeah. Since we have some time, uh, I, I didn't want to put this in the agenda, but I added a link. Mm -hmm. And for this link, if you see, there's a, there's a warning banner that the documentation is out of date. Mm -hmm. uh, so someone mentioned like the documentation is actually fine. It's just the banner that needs to be updated. But mm -hmm. I was wondering if we need to create an issue to actually verify if uh, all the steps work and then we can remove that banner. Yeah, that's a good point. I think we should create issue at least for that. And also, so I think we had it, that discussion last time. So we wanted to simplify making changes in developer uh, yeah. books and the ticket, sorry, that Ed created a Git repository. And I know that we, this week we plan to add, finally uh, add all contributors to Argus approach members. And basically everyone will have just direct right access to that documentation repository. When when I've set it up, yeah. At at set up the repository and made me the uh, administrator, mm -hmm. but I have had no time so far. 
yeah to, so it's to, kind of... to make it but it's it's on on my agenda so mm -hmm. um and I, yeah i think to answer your question maybe it's good to create a ticket for that uh, and and then probably just remove that banner Right, cool. So I'll, I'll create an issue and then maybe add in the description that once pending verification, then we can remove the panel. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And then I think, Jan, once you have, uh, uh, once you configure the documentation repo, I think we were planning to just start moving, moving that whole documentation into the repo. I feel like there is no harm to remove it from here because like end users don't care about developer. Yeah, we can right. keep the link. We, we can we can just we can just uh, link it or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we have also um, there's basically a community standard um, this contribution .md mm -hmm. in, the, in the top level directory of the repository. Maybe we should just reference the the new documentation repository from there as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm I'm with you to to just move it. Cool. All right, and since we have some time left, I, maybe we can discuss topics for the next meeting. So one possibility was to, uh, I think we will need to talk about testing next week because hopefully we'll be ready to start testing. So we can kind of just recap, you know, what is the plan? And maybe we can work, kind of talk together about 1.9 uh, features. And basically we can either vote or somehow figure out how are we going to, uh, you know, come up with a list of things we want to implement in 1.9? So, yeah, that's, anyone have any other ideas, like what other topics you want to discuss? Okay, either way, we have whole week, so uh, don't hesitate to add anything if you want to discuss into the uh, community uh, document. But yeah, I kind of encourage you to think about 1.9 release because it's your chance pretty much to add what you, work, what you want to work on into 1.9 uh, milestone. Yeah, I think uh, we 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 have some 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 like some question as to uh, how like we we want yeah we, we want to find some some area that maybe maybe we uh, we, we could contribute more um more uh, uh in a fashion that is more organized. So right now we we, we pretty much pick up pick up uh, whatever uh, fix uh, whatever whatever bug we all see want to fix. But uh, yeah, I think. I think, I think I think we need to uh, we probably want to think about uh, like maybe in in a, in a one dot nine time thing maybe just in one uh, area or you know one one area that that uh, how 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 we can contribute. Mm -hmm. um, so it's you know looking for idea and uh, yeah um, yeah so just just want to share that thought. So like like, like we had the uh, in our in our team. Mm -hmm. We're thinking, yeah, um, yeah. So I I noticed that uh, at the Red Hat team, you kind of you have very uh, like a lot of different types of experiences. So some people wanted to focus on backend, some people on frontend. So I think we will come up with kind of separate like uh, one big feature for uh, for your people and big feature for. Uh, to be honest, I have good understanding about uh, backend work, and maybe you can even give us, maybe you have more ideas about UI work, because so far there was a lot of tickets created uh, proactively by Red Hat team in term, uh, for, for UI functions. So I feel like, yeah. I'm happy yeah. to have these backend uh, ideas, so we can sync up in Slack. And for front end, I'm happy to hear what you want to improve. Because I right. feel that I, I trust that you can come up with good <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we actually uh, have it on the back end than the front end. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. 
I think, I think, yeah, we, we also, we, I mean, uh, you, you've seen uh, team and, and uh, give it, just they, they contribute on the front end as well. Yeah. So, yeah, just, 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 uh, uh, yeah, one, we want to explore maybe in one night, one night, there's many particular feature. Okay. Well, let me, let's yeah. give me a couple of days to think about it and I will come back in, in Slack and I think in our dev channel and we can figure out, uh, I, I will just yeah. a list of ideas and then we can keep one and then we can see who wants to participate. Yeah, yeah that, that, that'd be awesome. Okay, and then we should maybe, that's the good discussion for the next meeting. So we should do some kind of homework and then in next uh, office hour meeting we can update everyone. Another point it's, or idea I'd like to share is we're talking uh, in the team about some sort of developer advocacy type work for these projects, for example, Tecton project, they have these blog or podcast series where mm -hmm. they engage the community on what are the work that's been going on. Let's say if someone's completely new to the, to the community, uh, videos and tutorials, uh, but not just posting on the, on the website, but more engaging like podcasts or videos or weekly shows. Um, mm -hmm. so is that something that we can, we can talk about, um, doing from, from the community level, let's say, like creating issues and tracking who's going to take up some work around that. Uh, yeah, can you, so I want to kind of put, make sure I understood it correctly. So you think Tecton, uh, they do kind of, they record videos where they, videos for pretty much for the team, for developers. And in this, in those videos, they explain what's happening in the project. Uh, is it right? Yeah, and it, it started very recently as well. So, mm -hmm. so before that, uh, when I was at IBM, I was working with the Tecton community, and mm -hmm. then we had just started uh, as part of CD Foundation. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was a weekly or monthly podcast series. Oh, where okay. we talk about different projects within the CD Foundation, but it started with Tecton. Mm -hmm. um, but then, even like other dev advocates had their own channel where they were creating weekly videos about like Tecton 101 or Tecton in-depth or in like details. So if someone let's say try to find something online, they'd have all those videos or podcasts, basically a lot more resources than just the developer guide. Um, for some people, it's much more easier to learn in that way. So if, if we could do something like creating those contents, but track it as issues from the community level. So so that we can focus on these areas and some of us could start working on those. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's kind of, it's a great idea. It's hard to implement it because it requires, uh, you know, a lot of time and effort, but I'm hoping we'll get there as soon as we get uh, more reviewers and approvers. And I think what team proposing is a good idea basically if we find now a big areas that, uh, people can own and then they, the owners, they can start uh, creating content for, you know, uh, and share it with the community. It's at least I, I'm trying to say that I would not commit myself to do it right now because I'm like I'm overloaded, but I really like the idea. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get uh, several reviewers soon. And later on, these people can get approval permission so they can just work on their own features without uh, asking you know me and Jan to review each and every PR, and then yeah, naturally they will have more to say about what's happening in the project. So that's my take on it. That's what I feel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I feel like I'm um, right now. We're kind of doing the best we can, and it's and we because. Uh, we have KubeCon that takes a lot of time. So pretty much every time we have something, you know, we need to share some content, we prioritize KubeCon because it has the highest visibility. And just to share with you, it, it like, it took several days to prepare a 20 minute long video. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, it is really time, time consuming. And it's nice to share more with contributors, but we just, uh, yeah, it's really time consuming. Yeah, yeah, for sure.
Okay, so we still have uh, 15 minutes. Um, yeah, I can, we can either get it back or we can discuss something else. Let's, let's have a beer together. <laughs> Sorry, say it again. Yeah, Let, let's have a beer together. Have a beer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could join you, but... Uh, we would love to. <laughs> <laughs> Too early for me. <laughs> but yeah, overall, let me st uh, stop sharing. I feel like uh, it's been like one to eight milestone is really exciting. I'm, I'm really happy with all the fixes and uh, UI improvements we've, we've made together. Um, yeah, that's been a great help. Uh, yeah, I yeah, think. Mm -hmm. Same here. Thank you so much for you guys' uh, guidance and uh, yeah, big big our <laughs> make our <laughs> journey to uh, uh to to the uh, community uh, enjoyable so far here. Yes, yes. I just want to you know here you know uh, we also glad glad to be um be be working on Argo City uh, glad to be co uh, contributing. Oh, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. And yeah. I, I personally, I've got, I feel like much more confident now, even though now we have crazy amount of pull requests and it's like, it's a little overwhelming, but it's really reassuring that project is, you know, alive and it has so many people who can support it. Uh, I think sooner we'll, I really see how we kind of getting better and better. And, uh, we just need to go through that exercise and uh, keep working, wait for, uh, you know, when people have expertise and knowledge about the project, and then at some point we'll get owners of areas. And then finally, like, we, we won't have a kind of bottleneck like me, who, like now I'm supposed to do and it's not because I want to review each and every PR, it's just we need to work a little bit longer this one and then, yeah. Yeah, I understand. We have to go through all this process. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but, okay, but, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we very much appreciate, you know, having this opportunity to uh, have like an office hour and make, really make, uh, us getting around a lot easier and thanks to all those uh, presentations and yeah, it's very helpful. Yeah, I, I also agree that it's, it's been, it's a very interesting experience for me as well, being a part of this project and being able to co contribute to something that's, that's going to be so impactful. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. I think we lost Alex. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I just muted myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. By the way, uh, speaking of presentations, uh, anyone is going to give a talk at KubeCon? Someone from Red Hat? Oh well, uh, I don't think anyone here going to, but certainly uh, people from Red Hat. Uh, yeah. Do you usually watch videos, uh, like participate? Now it's much easier. I think now it's kind of almost for free. You can uh, that is join KubeCon and watch all the presentations. Yeah, yeah. Actually, right now it's easier. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to travel. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we 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 usually have uh, uh, I, I know. People from Tap Tecton and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, folks that know that they they, they participate, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know about this yet. I haven't heard. Uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't heard about that. Or that. I think uh, I'm, I'm sure they they be, they also be uh, continuing doing that. But personally, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you, so you you be preparing. So, how 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 thing goes uh, on the on the Argo CD uh, side of the uh, uh, several uh, talks. We've had because Argo is a, a CNCF project. We had one talk for free, so we could just talk about anything. So, me and Hong 
I think he's not in that meeting. We're going to just present a date about Argo CD and the demo that shows how to use all Argo projects together. So there is a way you can connect Argo CD, Argo events, Argo workflows, and Argo rollouts and kind of combine a whole like application out of it. So that's what our talk is going to be about. And I know Alex Collins and Jesse are going to present as well. Each one has a separate talk. I know Jesse is going to talk about uh, how to manage YAML in a, <laughs> how to manage Kubernetes configuration in a big enterprise. So it's a lot about uh, config management tools and challenges, you know, pros and cons of customizing Helm. I do not remember what Alex Collins is going to be uh, talking about. I'm actually not speaking uh, this year. We were waitlisted, but we didn't get accepted. Oh, so it's okay. going to be machine learning. Machine. Okay, so I was yeah I'm mistaken, and I'm I'm pretty sure there was one more talk, and I I totally forgot what there was one talk about. Some Argo project. I forgot what is it. So I need to double check. And I know that someone. Oh, okay. I know what is it about. It's a, there is a team at Intuit and they do a chaos engineering and they leverage Argo workflows. I think they're going to demo how they do it. I see. Good. All right. So now you're done. You, 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 you can get your time back to, to work on, uh, to work on a project. Yes, we, it was kind of easier this way because we could just record uh, the presentation and be done with it. Uh, if you do it live, it kind of you have to stay. Yeah, it will take take you even more time, and you have to be physically yeah. be there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The presentation you mentioned sounds pretty interesting about how all the Argo projects can be connected. Um, if, if there's like a link or something at some point, uh, um, really yeah, it's, uh, it's the link is available already. I don't, it's like you can get it from the presentation and from the slides and slides already published. So I can just share that link in, in, in chat right now. Uh, yeah. So I'm wondering, uh, Flex CD, so, so you guys were uh, 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 collaborating on the Git, uh, Git engine, right? Yes. And then it, it, it... Yeah, I can give a bit about this. So Flux team, they kind of, they changed focus right now. I think they work on, they want to focus on pretty much expanding scope. And this is just my understanding. So it's not like official, but that's what I, this is how I understood it. They decided to uh, work on even big, they want to extend scope. So they want to include whole, they want to answer a question, how do you introduce GitOps process? So they're building GitOps toolkit, which is a set of tools and it's going to kind of replace Flux V1. And uh, so part of GitOps tools is going to do GitOps and there will be other things like how to connect pipeline, how to apply uh, manifest modifications, how to do a bunch of things. So maybe at some point they get back to GitOps engine, but it's like no longer a priority for them. Yeah, so, and the, the change, there was a change which was kind of ready to be merged in Flux V1 to use GitOps engine, but it's no longer in the important for them because Flux V1 is end of life it's no longer maintained. So that's why they didn't want to, you know, break it. And, and then, so if they migrate to GitOps engine, there would be some period of time where uh, there would be some bugs and they would have to support users and fix all these bugs. So they decided just not to merge it, focus on what's important for them. And then at some point, maybe they will get back to GitOps engine again and they can start working on, uh, you know, they can maybe leverage GitOps engine. Um, yeah, and another update is about GitOps engine is that GitLab uses it. I'm personally very excited about it. So GitLab, uh, they use it and they contribute a lot. I noticed, so Mikhail from GitLab contributed 51 commit to GitOps engine. 
So it feels like to me, it's not like they contribute, they, they drive <laughs> changes in GitOps engine right now. And that's very exciting to me. Yeah. Sorry, I think we lost you. At least I cannot hear you, William. And still cannot hear you. It's either me or... I'm, uh, yeah, sorry. So okay. were, were the GitOps engine really a merge of the two code base or was it primarily coming from Argo, Argo it's CD? From Flux, it? Argo. Yes, so uh, we didn't get uh, anything yet from, from Flux. We were hoping to get things related to uh, working with Git. Uh, so Flux has more features related to writing back to Git and then monitor uh, doc history, Docker registry. But now uh, Jan already implemented uh, Docker registry monitoring in a GitLab, GitLab's project. And we, I think we will need to, maybe in 1.8, we can uh, add some missing features in Argo CD repo server to make changes in kind of in uh, Git repository. If we do that, then we will really have, we will get a uh, uh, write back and Docker registry monitoring feature and it would be pretty much have same set of features like for, uh, like in Flux. Yeah, so that gap is kind of almost filled. We did it ourselves already. Yeah, and just to kind of clarify, Flux can watch, uh, it can wait for new image tags in Docker registry and when a new tags get pushed, Flux can go and push changes back to uh, Git and then trigger normal GitOps cycle and we already have piece that can monitor and watch, uh, you know, wait for new images. But instead of pushing changes to Git, it updates uh, Argo parameters in the CRD. So it's not the same because in, in many cases you want to get changes back to Git. And to do that, we just need, hopefully we need a single API in, <clears throat> repository server to make changes in Git and commit it. So we already have a code that can kind of create the change. We know which file to change. We just need to kind of just do it and finally kind of connect to functionalities. It's a, it's a submarine feature in Argo CD right now. <laughs> it's, it's not documented. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all kind of, it was you know, kind of hidden. So, and yeah. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, but the missing step, yeah, it's 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 not that much of work, I think. But it's yeah, it's um, kind of mostly we, we need to discuss a little bit about the design and mm -hmm. I think the the actual code will be not so not too complex or yeah. just just need to make sure we get it right and not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And and why why we are uh, already we're talking about this uh, the the image updater, uh, I just want to to make some advertisement because um, yeah it could it could need some help as well. <laughs> yeah. And same as with uh, Argo notifications, it's another feature in Argo CD, I think it's really needed. A lot of people asking for notifications and I and I worked on notifications a lot and then I had to switch on Argo CD and work on performance improvements. And big uh, thanks to Oleg for helping with that. And I'm really hoping we'll, so I, I was hesitating to advertise that uh, <laughs> project a lot because uh, it's, it, it works, it can be used, and I know that companies use it in production already, but there are bugs that have to be fixed, and I don't have to time to fix it. Hopefully we'll get it in a better shape soon too. Yeah, yeah maybe it will, will be integrated into Argo CD one day yeah. as well. Yeah. The, so the notification feature is, is really useful, so we, we use it as well. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. I think we actually, like, it's a good point. So I think we should, I feel like I can't, I hesitated to talk too much about uh, our notifications and 
you know, advertise it to end users, but I should share about it more in uh, contributors community to, yeah. Agreed. And same with uh, updater. Okay, I think, yeah, it's, it's 11 a.m. or whatever <laughs> time is it in, in your time zone, but basically end of a meeting. <laughs> Yeah, top the hour. <laughs> it's time for beer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye bye. Everyone, bye.